I'm Sylvia and I'm your elder serving you today. I'd like you to pay attention to some legal announcements. I will start on behalf of the NSA team, the New World Student Association team, I'm always nervous. Um, tonight we're going to have a great Bible festival. Um, the Bible festival, you will have quizzes, you will have questions. It's the 10th of April. I will be in the foyer in the main church after the service, so please come speak to me if you'd like to connect door to door or pubbing. Um, I would like to remind you, I'm sure that you already know, but uh, I would like to remind you of the ADRA auction that's coming up on the 9th of April, which is next Saturday night. Lord, if I could buy you a gift to show you my love, tell you how I feel, it wouldn't matter what I have to give. I would find a way to get it for you, but fortunately, that's not the case, and we both know I don't have bank. But I won't let it affect my presentation to you. See, this is what I bring. Here is my hands to my heart. Lord, here's my life, my everything. Take it, it's yours, oh Lord. My all, my everything, every song that I write, every song that I sing, every day of my life that I have to bring, you gave to me, so Lord, I rededicate it right back to you, you're the love of my life, so faithful, so true, yeah, I get a good about you and there's nothing I would not do for you so here is my hand to my heart Lord is my life my everything say here cause it's yours for oh Lord it's all I have to give it's all I have Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being you. You are amazing and you are so powerful. You created us and you died for us. Let that humble us today as we praise you and please receive our prayers. We pray in your name. Amen. Morning. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I'm in a really, 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 really good mood, okay? So the rule is, when I'm in a good mood, everyone else has to be in a good mood. Are you, are you clear? Alright, so what we need to do is just turn to the person next to you, we do it all the time, but just really hug them, okay? And just tell them you love them. Alright, can you do that for me? <laughs> what is your <laughs> Just the fact that... Alright, I've got a question for you guys. Can anyone name one thing that all of the 7 billion human beings are doing on the earth right now. Breathing. Hey, you guys answered too quickly. I was expecting, you know, some hominin or something. I really think about the most simple thing that we do, but we just take it so easily for granted. You see, inhalation begins with the onset of the contraction of the diaphragm, which results in an expansion in the intrapillow space and an increase in negative pressure according to Boyle's law. Now, this negative pressure allows for air flow because of the pressure difference between the atmospheric air and the air in our alveolus. So when we breathe in and we breathe out, Air enters in, either through the mouth or the nose, down the throat, through the trachea, and in to the alveolar. Every time we simply breathe in and breathe out, it is a miracle. And to here, here today, we're here to worship the origin of all miracles. So I just want to invite the praise team up in the band up, and we're going to worship God today. Is that okay? 
I said, we're going to worship God today. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I am I Lord. Can you hear 
Now, church, this is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. All I do all. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior.
and if you if you want. Jesus took bread, 
gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my kingdom, in my Father's kingdom. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do.
Thank you, Father, for the Sabbath day, for bringing your people into your house and for giving us that foretaste of glory divine. I want to thank you for this community. Newborn Church is a real family and I thank you for the care we find here. Help us to be more aware, especially in this day of communion, of the needs of our brothers and sisters and ready to provide comfort and help when needed. Come quickly, Lord. Your Savior, face to face. Just imagine that. The creator of this universe coming to take his people home. And you're there face to face with him. What would you say? We just want to spend a few moments just talking to Jesus right now. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for all that you've done for us throughout this week. It's your time now. Speak through me, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, picture the scene with me. Jesus and his twelve disciples are sitting on the floor in the upper room in a circle and uh, I can just imagine that the room is dimly lit probably uh, just one or two candles energetically flickering on the floor and uh, uh, they are reflecting the joyful shadows as they dance on the wall uh, seemingly telling us about the emotional state of the disciples you see, the disciples are about to have Passover with Jesus. Oh, Jesus, they, they love Jesus. Jesus is their, their saviour. He's their, he's their boy. He, he's, he's been with them through thick and thin. Uh, Jesus has literally transformed their lives. Uh, he has literally saved their lives numerous times. Do, do you remember when uh, they were on the boat and this great storm arose? And, and here, you know, some of these guys, this is their profession, this is what they do, but uh, they're struggling in this boat and uh, they're trying uh, not to wake Jesus, but they get to a point where uh, there's nothing more than they can do but uh, just wake Jesus and say, Jesus, save us. Jesus stands up and says, peace, be still. Not only that, but Jesus has also helped them financially. Remember uh, when they were out all night fishing and uh, uh, they didn't catch anything. And Jesus said, listen, go out one more time. Uh, just throw your nets over the other side. And, and they did so and they caught such a, a, a bountiful uh, harvest. They are with Jesus in the upper room. They see that this group has family. Can you see it? Can you smell the, 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 the smell of unleavened bread, freshly cooked? Uh, the, the, the smell of roast lamb as it's uh, being turned on the fire. Uh, they've all got uh, cups of uh, freshly squeezed wine in, in their glasses and they're about to have Passover with Jesus. Jesus who is their friend. 
Jesus who they loved, that one person that uh, can do no wrong in their eyes. They wanted him to be king. Here they all are in the upper room. And they're uh, partaking of this meal together. And, and in the midst of all of this joy and love and happiness, it, it seems that Jesus then goes and drops a, a bombshell. Uh, one of you is going to betray me. Oh, how that must have gone down like a, a lead balloon. Uh, here they were uh, in such love and harmony. And, and then Jesus drops this bomb. Little did they know that Judas was sitting there amongst them with 30 pieces of silver tucked in his belt. You see, Judas, uh, let me say this about Judas, Judas often gets a bad, bad rap. But Ellen White says, if, if Judas had not returned to Jerusalem and he had died before he got back to Jerusalem, uh, Judas would have been counted worthy uh, to be counted amongst the twelve. So Judas wasn't a, a bad guy. But see, I think things weren't moving fast enough for Judas. Uh, Judas wanted Jesus to be the king of kings and uh, release them from the oppression of Rome. And, and so he thought, well, listen, let me just uh, uh, push Jesus' hand. Let me tell uh, these guys where to find Jesus and Jesus won't let himself be captured. Uh, and so Jesus will then be forced to uh, uh, take the throne and release us from the bondage. And so Judas goes and uh, says, listen, I will tell you where Jesus is. And Judas is given 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. And Judas betrayed Jesus for the price of a slave. And so here Judas is amongst the new church that Jesus was about to uh, institute. Here, this is the new church and, and Judas is sitting in this church with 30 pieces of silver tucked in his belt. The interesting thing is, is Jesus knows this. Jesus knows this. And uh, if you read Luke or John's Gospel, you will see that, that Jesus knows that Judas has uh, betrayed him, but Jesus still washes Judas' feet. Jesus still allows Judas to partake in the bread and the wine. Uh, even though Judas has 30 pieces of silver, tuck in his belt. 30 pieces of silver representing lies, deceit, hatred, gossip, backstabbing, murder. Judas has this tucked in his belt and Jesus still offers him grace. How many of us are here today, metaphorically speaking, with 30 pieces of silver tucked in our belt. How many of us are, are here sitting, uh, about to take communion, about to take uh, this holy ordinance, uh, uh, with things that we are planning to do tonight, or the things that we did already, the gossiping that we had, the backstabbing, the lies, the extramarital affair, all the bad things tucked in our pocket. Now let me tell you the good news. It doesn't matter if you have those 30 pieces of silver tucked in your pocket. Because Jesus still knows and accepts you. The wonderful thing about communion is it is a recommitment of our lives to God. The ordinance of foot washing is like a, a rebaptism. It's an opportunity for us to take this 30 pieces of silver out and throw it away. Many of us have come to the communion table with 30 pieces of silver tucked in our pocket. The interesting thing is you have this new church that's uh, sitting around and, and Jesus has dropped this bombshell. He said, listen, one of you would betray me. And, and, and the interesting thing is that it's their response to Jesus. 
How many of us have been with our friends and our friends are saying, listen, uh, uh, they need you to do something and it's important and, and they're saying, listen, but you're going to let me down. And you reassure them that, no, I would never let you down. I'm going to be there for you. But the response of the disciples seems to be, is it me? Am, am I going to be the one that betrays you? Uh, surely not I. The, the speculation there, the, in, uh, the, the unsureness of, of who is actually going to betray. And I, I just want to say, as we come to the communion table today, as we're about to partake of the bread and the wine, it is an opportunity for us to remove all of the uncertainties, the unsureties that we have, those metaphoric 30 pieces of silver, it is an opportunity for us to recommit our lives to Christ. To be baptized anew, to be washed afresh. Here, God is uh, opening the door and the opportunity for you to come and uh, recommit yourself to him. But it is a sacred ordinance. All are invited to partake in this ordinance. But Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians to take the bread and the wine to remember what Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. I want to invite everybody to partake. You may have not come with the intention of taking communion, thinking, well, there are things that I have done, there are issues that I have, I have that metaphoric 30 pieces of silver tucked in my belt. But grace is still afforded to you. Grace is still open. It was there for Judas. Grace was on the table. It's only when Judas left that the doors of probation for him closed. So I invite everybody to come and partake in the ordinance of communion. Amen. At this time, we're just going to break the bread. While we're going around with the bread and the wine, if anybody has, if anybody has a testimony, this is the gluten-free bread. Yeah. Okay. Gluten-free. If anybody has a testimony that they would like to share, please do so at this time now. praying this is to what I should do something like on the streets and 
my last step, I close the same. This is still a little bit different. And I, I like this uh, short verses we can read somewhere in the streets because I'm not native English speaker and I don't understand this complicated book. So this Easter I was in Oxford and this was my my sign. I made it. I'm the light of the world, Jesus Christ. So according to Abacob chapter 2, verse 2, verse 2, it's good if the vision or the verse is short. This is my testimony. And anyway, this happened to my sister last week. She is in France and she was taking her son to school. And over there is a small school, the, the school he goes to, where Joshua goes to. And um, um, the parents take turns to bring the snack at school. And it was her turn, and it was also Joshua's birthday. So she made a fruit train, you know, with pineapple and fill it up with other fruits and the wheels with kiwi and so on. Mm -hmm. And she has uh, the little baby as well, who is um, five months. And on the way, the tire, she had, um, she had a puncture. And she forgot the phone at home. So <laughs> she stopped the first person um, passing by, she stopped the car and it happened to be a mechanic and a very nice mechanic as well who um, sorted her out, his garage was not that far and she made it to school and even put the whole fruit train together for um, Joshua's birthday. So I thought how amazing is that? that? And she was, when she was sharing it in our prayer group she said um, if she had the phone, she would have called her husband and things would have taken much longer to get this whole thing fixed and Joshua wouldn't get there on time for the food train. So not bringing the phone was a blessing to find the mechanic and to sort it out much faster. For I have received from the Lord what I also hand on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is for my, sorry, this is my body that is broke for you. Do eat this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, I just want to thank you so much for your broken body and the blood that you've shed that we may have eternal life. We thank you so much for this great sacrifice that you have made on our behalf. Now as we partake of this, dear Father, we know that it is not your literal body or your literal blood. They are just symbols, dear Father. But we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Take eats all of it. I have uh, been living in Colchester, uh, mm -hmm. looking for a place. Uh, last week we completed on our house, um, so hopefully within the next few weeks we'll be moving in. We've just been doing some decorating at the moment. Um, so I just want to thank God for uh, allowing us to be able to uh, get, get, get um, this place so that we can be closer to you and not doing a two hour commute um, to get here. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure 
And it's just so humbling to know that this mighty, powerful being, you know, that spoke this world into existence, wants to chill with a waste man like me, with so many flaws, forever and ever and ever. Amen. Advance for bringing us for the rest of this week. In Jesus' name, amen.